Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. I love teaching the Word. I love coming to you one-on-one, heart-to-heart with the Scriptures. On the program today, on This Is Your Day, I want to teach again on prayer. You know, the disciples said to the Lord, teach us to pray. And I think this is still our cry. Because prayer restores power. Prayer restores spiritual strength. Paul said, renew my inner man. Strengthen my inner man. But how? Prayer. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It's a process. It's daily contact with God that renews our strength. Here's what God has to say about this. You all know Isaiah 40. Let me read this to you. Verse 28, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Listen carefully, because... He's introducing himself to you and what he can do for you. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. So those who are strong in the flesh will, will collapse, will fall. Natural strength will not do it. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. What God is saying is, when you pray, you will, you will reach that same strength that is in Him. Because He says, I don't faint, I don't get weary. And the next thing you read in verse 31 is, they that wait upon the Lord will not faint or be weary. In other words, they will have the strength of God. Where God is, they will be. That's a powerful thing that the Lord is showing us here. And then he says, he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he will increase strength, spiritually and physically. The Lord is talking about both. You see, prayerlessness is a, is a disease. And prayerlessness, like I said yesterday, began in the garden when Adam hid from the Lord. Not in the Lord, because hiding in God is prayer. Hiding from God is prayerlessness. So there he was hiding from the Lord because he sinned. So sin is the problem. The fall of man brought about prayerlessness. Now we can, we can, we can defeat prayerlessness in our life. We can, we can be healed from, the, from this deadly disease if we pray. But it's our decision to get in there. It's our decision to say to, to the flesh, you're going you're gonna to obey me. I'm going to pray. Because Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he said, but I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection, lest after I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway. So what he's saying is in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, is that I have to force my flesh into submission. I have to force my flesh into subjection. Meaning that the flesh is fighting you back, struggling. So we are in a war. We are in a struggle. But we win when we pray and we lose when we don't. On the program yesterday, I showed you from Job 21 what, what happens when people do not pray. And it's very frightening. No counsel, no light, uh, you know, no blessings or forgiveness, no preservation, no protection. I showed you all that yesterday. On the program today, I want to deal with the three realms of prayer and how to get in into the presence of the Lord and see victory and, and come into that place where now you're really participating with the Lord in decision making because Ezekiel says that. Because agreement with God is the highest form of prayer. But we'll, we'll, we'll get there in just a second. Now, here's what I want to point out to you. In, in uh, Isaiah 27... And this is what we all need daily. And remember, daily contact is the key. 
Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Because when you, when you neglect time with God, that's when your battery begins to go down. Now think about this. You charge your phone battery or other batteries you have. You know, like every day I charge my, my, my cell phone for it, and I charge it every, every single day. It takes about, what, an hour or so? Think about your spiritual battery. How long it takes for it to charge? I'll, I'll tell you how long. Two weeks. I've seen this from my own experience. If you want to be at full capacity again, it's two weeks of prayer. Daily contact with God for two weeks will recharge you way back up again to full capacity. But if you neglect prayer after that, it'll start to go down. So you have to stay daily in contact with God to keep it at full capacity. It's important you understand this principle. They that wait means they that wait in a process of time, not waiting just for one minute or one hour or one day. No, no, you have to continue waiting. It's that prayer without ceasing that Paul talks about, meaning continual prayer, daily prayer. And the Lord taught us that we have to pray daily. He said, don't faint, don't give up, because when you give up, that's when everything goes wrong and the enemy gains strength against you. Remember this, every time you pray, you gain strength against the enemy. And every day you do not pray, he will gain strength against you and you get weak and you slow down. Uh, it says in Isaiah 40, it says, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength, mount up with wings as eagles, meaning your discernment is back now in the spirit. Mount up with wings as eagles means you're up in the high places of the earth where the, where the winds are strong, the power of God is strong. And it says they shall run. So in the high places of the, of the earth, the places of praise and worship where prayer can take you into, now you're able to run and catch up with God. They shall run and then they will walk. In the spirit, we run before we walk. Not in the flesh, in the spirit. You always have to run before you walk in the spirit. You are running to catch up because, see, prayerlessness slows you down. Prayerlessness takes you back. Prayerlessness puts you in the back row where Amalek can get you. Because in the Old Testament, it talks about Amalek killing the Israelites who were in the back. Those who could not follow the cloud were killed by Amalek. Well, you and I have to stay under the cloud by prayer. It's prayer that keeps you under the cloud in the right place with God. That's why it says they'll run, they'll catch up with where God is. And now they'll walk means their fellowship is restored. And fellowship with God is powerful because fellowship with God is that continual prayer. And as you are praying daily, you are exhaling the flesh and inhaling the Holy Spirit. I'll say it again. Every time you pray, you do to the, to the flesh and to the Holy Spirit. So you're exhaling the flesh, inhaling the Holy Ghost every time you pray. It takes two weeks of that before your battery is fully charged to 100%. Now, when you are in that place of prayer and when everything is right, here's what it says in Isaiah 27.5, uh, and I love this verse. Let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me and he shall make peace with me. I love this. Therefore, only prayer will bring you to a place where you have peace with God. Remember what the psalmist said in, 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 in Psalm 3, because see, this is the key to victory against the enemy. Don't forget what I'm telling you now. If you want to see victory over Satan, it comes only through prayer. It says this, it says that there was trouble. How are they increased that trouble me? This is verse 1, Psalm 3. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Do you, do you feel like that? There's, you, 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 you have enemies you did not know about and troubles you did not plan for? Okay, it comes to all of us. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul there's no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Here's the key. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. That's prayer. He heard me out of his holy hill. The next thing you read is how calm he became. David now suddenly is at peace. He said, I cried unto the Lord. He heard me, and then I laid me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. And I love verse 6. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people 
that have, that have set themselves against me round about. In verse 1, he was, he was afraid. In verse 6, he's fine. He's perfectly whole, well, and peaceful. Why? Because he has called upon the Lord. And when you call upon the Lord, your enemies will run away. Psalm 56, I love this verse. Verse 9, when I cried unto thee, then my enemies turned back. This I know, God is for me. So if you want to see the enemy run away from you, prayer is the key. Prayer and only prayer will do it. Psalm 56, verse 9, when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. Okay, now. The three realms of prayer. We, we, we begin, and let's, by, by, by the way, go to Matthew, because I want to show you this. This is really powerful. Uh, the Lord said that we are to begin by asking. This is the, the, the asking realm, the asking world. This is where we know what we need, you know, salvation for our loved ones, help and healing and, and so on. So we're reading now Matthew 7, verse 7, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, you will find. Knock, it shall be open. These are the, the, the three realms of prayer. We begin with the asking world. This is what we enter in like in the, in the Old Covenant. Moses built the tabernacle that had three uh, sections to it. It had the outer court, holy place, holy of holies. In the outer court was the altar of sacrifice and the labor. This is the, the place where we make our requests that we know about. We make our requests to the Lord and come and say, Father, here's my prayer list. And we make our requests. But also that is the place where the enemy can attack us and harass us. And our minds wander and we get tired and want to, you know, say amen and leave. But no, no, you've got to stay because when you stay, you will come into a breakthrough. And when you break through into the holy place of prayer, this is the second realm that is called the seeking realm. Jesus said, seek. Now, we ask for answers, but we seek the Lord. We're not seeking for answers now. We're seeking Jesus. Ask, so we're asking for the things we need. Let your requests be made known, the Bible says. But now we seek. The seeking world is we're seeking Him. We're seeking the Lord. We're not seeking miracles. We're not seeking answers. We are seeking the person of Christ Jesus. We're seeking Him. And you can tell the difference because suddenly your words become few. Like Job 5 says, it says, let your words be few. Your words become few, and now suddenly everything you say, you mean it. It's not repetitious. It's now right to the point. And you mean everything you say. And tears enter into that realm. Suddenly you're crying, you're worshiping, you're praising. You're not even able to, to, to stop from praying in the spirit you're not able to stop from praising Jesus and loving him and telling him how precious he is to you that's the seeking realm but the seeking realm is not even all of it because now you have to walk into the the knocking realm we, we're knocking but what are we knocking on we're knocking on a door who is the door aha it's the Lord it's the Lord so when Jesus said knock he was saying knock on my heart he, was saying, you know, he wasn't saying, knock on some door of, of some room. He is the door. He said, I am the door. Now, when you knock, you're, into, you're, you're in the spirit. You're in the realm of the spirit. Now you're walking in the spirit, and something happens. The minute you begin to walk in the spirit, the flesh is dead. It says, walk in the spirit, and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Instantly, as you're in that third realm, and that happens, by the way, it'll, it'll take you probably an hour, an hour and a half. I've never known it to come quicker than that. So you got to spend time. This is the key. This is the price. This is the price you'll have to pay. This is the price we all have to pay. Nobody can walk into the, the presence of, of, of the Lord in five minutes. That's impossible. Because there is, there is, a, there is a, a plan. There's a road map, as I call it. Because God will not allow you to walk into his presence with, without passing first the altar of sacrifice. That's where the blood is applied. Where you have to pass the labor. Where the word of God begins to affect you. And all that happens in the outer court. All that happens in the asking realm. That's why it's, it's, it's not right to just make requests without the promises of God. 
uh, there with you because you have to pray the scripture. You have, to, you have to pray the promises. When I pray, I'm not saying, Lord, save my family, help me, bless me. I'm saying, Lord, you said. Lord, you said in your word. I'm still in the asking realm because that's what the labor is. Please hear me. This is important. You cannot pray unless you come to the altar of sacrifice and apply the blood. It's impossible to walk into God's presence without the blood. That's the first thing you do. Then you come to the labor where the word of God begins to wash you. And in prayer, you say, the Lord, to, to the Lord, you say, now, Lord, your word says, your word says, but you're still in the, in the asking realm. Now you go into the seeking realm. What's in the seeking realm? In the seeking realm is the lampstand to your, to your left and the showbread to your right and the incense in front of you. Therefore, there's where you seek in the light of God. You're, you're seeking him as the only bread for your life. And now you enter into praise and worship. You're seeking into that seeking blessed world. You're seeking Jesus. And the minute you do, you'll break through into the spirit. And when you are into the holy of holies, silence prevails now. Be still and know I am God. Psalm 46. You enter into that place where now God is talking to you rather than you talking to him. And this is where your strength is now restored with power and beauty. And suddenly everything is right. And in that place, something begins to happen. In Ezekiel, this is really, really powerful. Ezekiel 22. Now this is where, and I must say, not many Christians get, get, get in there because so many of us say amen way, way before God is ready for us. We say amen and leave. Some say amen and leave in the outer court. Some say amen and leave in the holy place. Okay, at least they accomplished something because now they're seeking Jesus. But God wants you to come into partnership with him to affect the nations and your family and the world. Think, when you come into oneness with God in that holy of holies, when you come into that place of partnership, here's what happens. In Ezekiel 22, this is fantastic, verse 30 to 31, it says, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. You become an intercessor. Intercession begins here. It is God the Holy Ghost who takes your vessel and you become literally a vessel of intercession and prayer. God begins to use you and through you affect the nations of the world. You know, it, it took only 120 to shake the world. It took three men to bring the Welsh revival who entered into that realm. It doesn't take many to shake the world. It takes few who will stay long enough till God enters in. When God enters in, now because it says, I sought for a man, I'm looking for someone who will pay the price and take, take the time to wait on me. Because it says, wait upon the Lord, you'll renew your, your strength, you'll get into those high places like the eagle, you'll run, catch up with God and you'll walk and your fellowship is restored. But now as you wait, Peace comes to your life, Isaiah 27, 5. You're, you have oneness and peace with God Almighty, and you become one with the Lord in fellowship. This is where that is because it says they shall walk. Your fellowship is totally restored. Now when your, your fellowship is restored, God says, okay, now I can use you. And now it says in verse 31, Therefore have I poured out my indignation because God could not find nobody. I have consumed them. Uh, because of my, of my wrath. Think about how much judgment has fallen upon people and the nations of the world because people have not gotten there into that holy of holies place to pray and seek God. Think about what God can do through you. Now, Ezekiel 36 tells me that when we enter into that place, that movements in heaven are restricted or loosed according to what happens in that prayer closet of yours. Because in Ezekiel, but now remember, I'm talking about those that enter in. You, you cannot affect heavenly decisions. You cannot restrict or lose heavenly powers if you're in the, in the outer court. You cannot bring it about if you're in the holy place. You only bring it about if you're in the holy of holies. When you're in the holy of holies, that's when God says, okay, everything you say, and I agree with, I'll, we, We'll do it together. This is the, the place of agreement. Agreement. This is a powerful thing I just said here. 
Ezekiel 36, verse 37 says, Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. So God's, God already has decided to increase Israel like a flock, but he's looking for somebody to, to agree with him to do it. God already has agreed to increase you. God already has, has, has decided to bless you. God already has decided to heal you and make you whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He's just looking for someone to agree with him. But agreement is not possible in the outer court. Not possible in the holy place. Agreement is possible only when you become one with him in the holy of holies. That's it. And when you're in there, suddenly everything is restored. The, the, you, you become an overcomer. Prayer and overcomers, um, you cannot overcome with, without prayer. Do you remember in, in Romans 8, 26, 27, it talks about the Holy Spirit helping our infirmities, causing us to, to come into the, that place of perfect prayer in the Spirit. The next thing we read, it says we are more than overcomers. Well, you, you cannot be an overcomer unless you begin with prayer. And in, 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 in Revelation 2.26, it talks about the same thing, that overcoming is, re, is the result of prayer. Uh, power is restored only in, uh, in prayer. Adam lost the power of God when he, when he stopped praying. Remember that? God gave him all power, all dominion. How did he lose it? He lost it when he hid from God. It was all gone. When sin entered in and he hid, from God, meaning prayerlessness, he quit praying. Power was, was gone. Jesus made a very powerful um, a statement in Luke chapter 10 when he said to, the, to his disciples, he, he, he said, pray. In verse 2, he said, pray. Let, let, let me just read this to you. Luke 10, 2, it says, pray that the Lord of the harvest will bring laborers uh, into his harvest. But the next thing we read is verse 19, Behold, I give you power. Power is restored only when we pray. So prayer and power are connected. You cannot experience the power of God without prayer. So I'm again out of time. How I wish I had more time to talk to you about this, but I want to send you for any gift my teaching on prayer and fasting. Get it today with, with a, a study guide that will help you. I want to help you pray, so please get this. But now, let's pray. Let's believe, God, that your prayer life will, will just explode with power. Let's believe, God, that your, your strength will be renewed like this. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come in agreement. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them that mighty, holy desire. Give that one watching, Lord, today, that mighty desire to seek you with all their hearts and find you. Dear Jesus, you said, come unto me, I'll give you rest. You said, if we seek you with all our hearts, we'll find you and find liberty in you. Granted today that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that this mighty hunger will be, will be born for prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray today. Amen, amen, amen. And Father, I pray for those in need of healing right now. Heal every person, I pray. Bring healing to their body, to their home and life. I rebuke every sickness in the name of Jesus. Lord, remove the disease, that pain today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you again for being my partner and friend. And remember, seek the Lord with all your heart. You will find him, and in him you will find your liberty. Bye-bye. Passover offering. God said, I will dispatch an angel. I will destroy your enemies. There are seven things in which he describes to us in Exodus. How that he will take sickness out of the midst of you. How that he will bring increase. The Passover offering is probably one of the most powerful offerings you can give to God. But it is the only offering in the whole Bible where God says in Numbers 9, I will wait 30 days. If you miss it on Passover, I will give you 30 days. I will give you the second month. 
and the 14th day of the second month. He might have said, I, I want to give the Passover offering. I want to be obedient to God. We've just experienced the red blood moon. Right now, we are connected in a time zone of a historic event. And it's not too late to stand before the Lord. God is so, so interested in blessing you that He says, if you'll stand before me, that angel will take you, will take you to the next blood moon. The next six months, the moderate rains of blessings that will be upon you. And you said, I, I don't want to miss it. And many, many people did it. And you should hear the testimonies. You should hear the testimonies of what is going on around the earth. Right now in the last 24 hours, the last 40 hours. And God said, and it's the only offering of all the offerings when it comes to seasonal offerings that God says, I'll give you another 30 days in Numbers 9 and the 11th verse. I want you to go to the, I want you to go to the phone and say, I want to put my Passover offering in this 30 days after Passover. I want to get it on the altar because I want the angel at my house, the invisible angel that will release, that will release healing, that will extend my life, that will bring prosperity. And God says, if you stand before me with the Passover offering, I will dispatch that angel. And if you have not given that Passover offering, go to the phone now. The urgency of obedience is upon me to promote and to, and to inspire and to pray and to anoint you to say, God, here is my Passover offering. To somebody watching me, it's going to give $3,000. Another one is going to give $300. Someone's going to give $150 in each hand. And, or somebody's going to give uh, $60 uh, in one hand, $60 in another. You're just going to stand before the Lord. Go to the phone. Go to the computer. I am telling you that I sense that God is is going to do a turnaround in your life. I'm picking up my phone. Will you pick up your phone? And let the exchange of you giving the Passover offering and the angel comes to your house, to your life, to your finances. Do it now. Seven Blessings of the Passover is Steve Muncy's in-depth study of the blessings which can be yours as a result of your Passover offering. When you honor God, He promises to assign an angel to you, be an enemy to your enemies, give you prosperity, take sickness away, bless you with a long life, bring increase, and give you a special 12-month blessing. Be sure to request your copy of Seven Blessings of the Passover when you honor God with your Passover offering of $300 or other significant amount. Call, write, or give online today.